This will be a brief introduction to Hebrew adjectives. And if you're using our textbook, this is Hackett chapter 7, section 2. Adjectives are words like tov, good, or ra, bad. Words in English like tall, short, funny, clever. Adjectives modify nouns in some way. And in Hebrew, one of the main things we'll need to get accustomed to is the fact that a word like tov, which means good, will change its form depending on the noun it goes with. So tov is all fine and good for something that is masculine and singular. But what if we didn't want to describe just one single masculine thing, but we wanted to describe several? In order to make a plural, we would take our word tov and add the letters im, tovim, would be appropriate for something plural and masculine. And by the same token, there are two genders in Hebrew. So if we were modifying a Hebrew noun, we would take tov and add a, tova. And feminine plural would be tovot. So we have four different forms for any adjective, depending on whether it's masculine or feminine, and whether it is singular or plural. Of paramount importance is to begin to memorize these endings, im for plural masculines, ot for plural feminines, a for feminine singulars, the masculine singular form is usually unmarked. It doesn't have anything added. It's the form we memorize to begin with. Now, if we wanted to take a different adjective, no longer good, but big, first we start with our Hebrew word for big. And you can see that this is going to mean all of our toves are going to disappear from this paradigm. So big in Hebrew is gadol, and that gadol will work just fine for the masculine singular. And here's a bit of good news. The work you put into memorizing the im, a, ot, those same endings are going to work for our new adjective gadol. So the plural will be gadolim, the feminine singular gadola, and the feminine plural Gadolot. Here there is just one more change we need to make. What I just animated would suggest that we simply take Gadol and can plop it in to any of the endings to make the different forms. In fact, we're going to have to make one small other change, and that is that in all of the forms that add an ending and thereby add an extra syllable, they're going to result in the shortening of the initial syllable. And so instead of gadolim, it'll be gadolim. Instead of gadola, gadola, gadolot, they will get a vocal schwa. That is a relatively minor change, and if, if you are learning and you accidentally just said gadolim, it's not the biggest mistake in the world. I would know what you meant. A Hebrew speaker would know what you meant. So to focus on what's kind of encouraging here, when we learn a new adjective, gadol, we get to reuse each of these endings for the plural, for the feminine singular, for the feminine plural. Let's do one more adjective. Let's do old, zakain. Zakain means old. And here, let's try to include that extra rule we just talked about. When we make the plural masculine right here, we won't simply say zakainim will reduce that first vowel to a schwa. Z-k-neem. 
And so there's the same schwa. So in a sense, we get to even reuse that rule we learned with gadol. Gadol became gadolim. Zakain becomes zakainim. And so on. So at first, everything is new and it feels like there's a lot to learn. But what I'm trying to illustrate here already is that patterns will emerge such that really the only energy you'll expend in, in the near future will be in learning new words. Zakain means old, Katan means small, Gadol means big. And that will be the trickier part, the part that takes more energy, and figuring out what endings to put on them and what minor changes in, in the front part of the word might take place. You're going to find that relatively easy, almost second nature. Let's take, go back to our tov, our simplest form, where nothing at all happens to the word. It's just tov in every case, plus these endings to designate whether it's singular or plural and masculine or feminine. What's the reason for these different forms? Well, let's illustrate that by making these adjectives go with a noun. Every Hebrew noun, and nouns are a person, place, or thing, Every Hebrew noun has an inherent gender. So we'll start with a noun, sus. The noun sus means horse, and it is gendered masculine. So because here we have something that is singular and masculine, if we want to use the word tov, good, to modify the word horse, we need this form of tov. So here's our sus, and here's our tov, and that says a good horse. We'll just go through some of the other permutations. Susa, you can probably already guess if Sus is a male horse, Susa is a mare, a female horse. And in this case, we cannot say Susa Tov. Since Susa is a feminine noun, we need to use the feminine adjective. And happily, they even sound alike and look alike. Susa, tova. There's a reason I haven't made susa, the reason I have, I have not made uh, the comet's hay a different color. And that is that nouns don't change gender. So a given noun has a specific gender, and that's set. It's just a feature of the noun. Whereas adjectives do change gender, and they change number. They can be singular or plural, masculine or feminine. They change their form to go with their noun. So the noun sort of sets the dance, and the adjective follows the lead of the noun. Let's do two more. Susim. This is plural and masculine. And again, you'll recognize a pretty easy to spot pattern. If sus was one horse, susim is several horses. It's masculine and it's plural, so we need a masculine and a plural adjective, and we'll have susim tovim, good horses. And finally, just to mix it up a little bit, rather than doing susot, mares, let's do torot the plural of Torah. So Torot would be laws or instructions. It's feminine. It's plural. And so we want the feminine plural form of Tov, Tovot. And so if we wanted to modify this and say good instructions, Torot, Tovot, good instructions, good laws good teachings. And with that, we're done. Tov ma'od. Good job. Very good. Ma'od. Very. Well done. 